Hi, this is Reese from Code Consortium, and here with another ANSI C video tutorial. I'm going to teach you some basic um, input output on the um, command line. So, whenever you're getting input, it's always really useful and important to tell the user what it is you want them to do, otherwise, they don't know whether the program's hanging or whether it's waiting for your input. So, I'm just going to put here enter your uh, let's put enter your height in meters like this always forget always remember your uh, backslash n so you get a new line and then to read input we use something called scanf this is another really cool function and we tell it what type of data we're reading in so I'm going to put the percentage sign in the f for float and then height like that so now when we run this it will ask for input it should read in uh, the input from the terminal and it will store it in the variable height we have to put this little ampersand here some different data types uh, want the ampersand and some don't uh, this is called referencing and you don't have to worry about this now I'll explain this in a different video it's not important to worry about now as long as you know that if you're using a float include it if you're not and it's a different data type then it, it really depends so here we're going to put um, let's put write a double like this Back, uh, don't forget your uh, semicolon again, it's really important just going to put some new lines down here okay. so then we're going to do scan f and then for our double we're going to put lf no, what am I doing? percentage sign lf like that okay. and then a comma and again this particular data type requires the ampersand so just put my double like that and let's get the user's name I put my name in by default but we can overwrite that so we have a type of string there so I'm just going to put the S and then we're going to put name like that in this particular instance you don't have to write the um, this should be scanf sorry Scanf. In this particular instance, you don't have to write the ampersand for string. Um, so let's tell them to enter your name. Let me get backslash n, semicolon. Now let's get them to enter their initial. So we put scan f. Now, when we get in the initial, we're going to tell it to get a type string. Now, a char only accepts one character. If you go over that, usually you'll get an error. But I'm pretty sure that scan f handles this this problem for you. So we don't have to worry about that too much. This data type does again require the ampersand. So just put that there and put initial semicolon and then what should we do what variables we go left oh we had a uh, age didn't we yeah so let's put print f enter your age backslash n scan f that was an integer so we'll take type i and then we'll put age that actually requires the ampersand because it's an integer. So integers, floats, and doubles require the ampersand. If you're typing a string, you don't need the ampersand, but if you're taking a char in, then because you're specifying, because uh, it's a char, you do have to have the ampersand, even though it says that it's essentially a type of string. It's probably a bit confusing this time, but don't worry, because the initial is only taking one character, this is taking many. So this is more like a string, and this is really just a char. So, now we should output what we got. So let's put a new line there before we start. So we put your name is, that's a string, and your age is, that's an integer, and you are, and we'll put 
uh, what was the height is um, a float. So we'll put F and put meters tall, like so. Backslash N to get a new line. And what other things did we take in? We've got the age, height. So the only thing we haven't put output now is initial. So we'll put that here, print F, so we get a nice new line. Um, your initial is as a char, and then we put and you typed a double, and then just put F for now. I'll show you something else about that. Right, so now we just got to go back here and fill in these variables here. So name here, then age was the second one, then the last was height. And then that was everything for that one. This line, just include my semicolon there in case I forget that. Um, your initial was C, so that requires initial, and then my double, like so. Now we go to the compiler and we pray that we don't get an error, which we didn't, which is good, I think. Now if we run it, enter your height in meters. I can't remember what my height is, I think it's something like 1.8 or something, so we just put that. A double, so we've got like a really big number here, it's fine. Enter your name. My name is Reese. Enter your initial. R. And your age, 23, as shown on my uh, profile. YouTube says, so your name is Reese. you got that correct, 23. And then it's got your uh, the height here that was entered. My initial came out fine, and my double came out. Now the thing about the double here, if you have a look, is it's the same number of digits as the float, but we know that the double is twice the size of that. So if we want to get the full size of that, what we need to do is change this here to have a decimal first, and then put the number of characters you want to output. So there's 15 digits in... Um, in a double, so if we do that, type that in there and go back, recompile that. In fact, I want to go back and add one more thing because it's kind of bugging me, and that is it's had a new line there. So compile that again, and then run it at height in meters 1.8, a double, blah blah. Let's put you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, da 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 etc. Enter your name, Joe, blogs, whatever, enter their initial J for Joe and their age. So if you look, see, now our double has come out much bigger. We're getting really the full size of the double now, because as you know, as I've stated, the double is twice the size of a float. So I hope that's been helpful so far in, in helping you understand getting some basic input and output. There are other methods of doing input and there are other methods of doing output. They have different facilities, different features and we'll cover some of that later. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check regularly for the next video in the series of NCC tutorials. For further discussion on programming, visit the forum on codeconsortium.com where you can post your questions and advice. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. See you next time.